Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Why I Love Flagler County, your local podcast, um, interviewing local businesses, local residents on why they like being in Flagler County and what they like to do in Flagler County. So thank you so much to my guest today, Dr. Lisa. Thank you so much for coming on today. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. I love this kind of stuff. Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah. So Lisa and I have known each other, I want to say a few weeks now through BNI. I feel like I've been a few times. <laughs> um, but she, uh, you're a nurse practi- practitioner. Is that, am I correct, correct in that? Perfect. Yes. So uh, Lisa is just an amazing person to meet. I remember, like, I think you were the first person I met at BNI, actually. I think so. Yeah, like yeah. Dr. Erica, the chiropractor, she just kind of took me over and you were so sweet and introducing me to the group and showing me a little bit about the group. So I'm really honored that you took a few minutes to come on today. Of course. Any way to help. Thank you. Well, I'd love to kind of start off. So you were kind of before the recording, you kind of just sharing a little bit on how you came to Flagler, which is a little bit of a different story. So I'd love for you to share on how you kind of found Flagler. I feel like anyone who's not from Flagler, we like kind of like found it by happenstance. Oh, my story is of how I found it is even even more funny than what I told you. So um, I've been in Gainesville. I moved to Gainesville to go to college when I was 17 um, and stayed there for, you know, 34 years. Um, in 2019, my ex-husband and I um, were, well, in 20, basically 2017, 2018, we were looking, right? Everybody in Gainesville goes to St. Augustine or Crescent. Right. That's just kind of like our, I don't know why. I had never been to Flagler. I had no idea it existed. And my realtor, like after showing us, I swear that poor woman probably showed us like 100 houses in St. Augustine and Crescent. And I mean, it was over the course of two years. And we had like a whole weekend and she was like, hey, because she lives in Palm Coast. She's like, but I knew her through other people in Gainesville and right. her office was actually in St. Augustine. So anyway, she's like, there's this really cute house in Flagler Beach. And I was like, I didn't know what Flagler Beach was. I guess my ex-husband had been once with his mom, like for a like a summer holiday or something. So he was familiar with it, but he hadn't been there in years, but I had never even heard of it. And so like it, I, I was, I was floored. I have a house right across from the intercoastal. I have a, a view of the water. I have this cute little totally remodeled house that I love. Um, and then everybody is so friendly in Flagler. Like I've been in Gainesville for 34 years and I have more friends in Flagler in the last two than I have from here. Like Gainesville is very transient with the college and it's just a different vibe. Everything is like chill there. Like if you if you go to like a restaurant and sit at the bar, you're going to meet the bartender and know about their kids. And then they're going to see you at Target and be like, oh my gosh, how are you? You know, it's just... <laughs> such a tight sweet community like I love it so um I I mean I could talk all day about how awesome it is and I mean I guess there was a question about like traffic and stuff and it's definitely got busier for sure um but some of my favorite things there's a wine slushy bar so that's there one is? of my favorite yeah you haven't been to Flagler Beach Winery on A1A well I'm underage <laughs> well I know but you have a mom or a dad I'm sure come on <laughs> no I didn't know there was a wine slushy place what yeah Ken and Kelly own it they're amazing and they have a, a vineyard I think one in Florida and in Ohio they make all their own wine all their everything is like theirs proprietary it's amazing so um they have they have um non-alcoholic slushies okay. they have they always have like a puzzle going so people go in and work on the puzzle and it's just a great little community place they have games you can play Jenga or whatever you said um, it's off A1A it's right on A1A. Yeah. Do you know their last names? Uh, Terracino T. Search for the T. I'm pretty sure, actually, I know the owners because they, yeah. their kids go kids. to Slag with FPC and they run track with my brother. They, yes, you do know them. Yes. So yes there you go. Run. This is like another like proof how Connection. small <laughs> is. That's funny. Yeah. No, I haven't personally, been, I'll have to shop by now. I have to. The slushies. They're just the oh, sweetest so things. They're just yeah, like, they're, the so best. Nice. they're so, yeah, they're, they're great. So, they're so yeah. Um, that was one of my favorite things. Like when I came here, I was like, everything is local. Like every, I mean, I know half of the business owners of the restaurants just because you go in and everybody's just nice and they meet right. you and they, you know, I don't know. It's just a totally different energy than, than in Alachua County. So I love Flagler for that. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure you re- like that sounds beautiful. Flagler Beach is like such a hidden gem. Like I know how we found it. My mom literally like 
went on the map and she went up like city by city like researching things of like where she wanted we wanted to live based off like criteria we had already pre-discussed and my she comes to my dad and she goes hey what about palm coast like flagler beach my dad goes what are you talking about what is that I mean, he's like what in the world are you talking about she's like it's in between Daytona and St. Augustine. St. Augustine. <laughs> That's what I always say too. I'm like, it's in between Daytona and St. Augustine, like right in the middle. And people are like, I have no idea. <laughs> right. That's so funny. Well, I would love to talk just a few minutes because you were kind of sharing um, on your practice and how you built your practice from zero patients to 2,700, which I think is an incredible number. So I'd love for you to share a little bit on how you got into that and then how that happened. Sure. So um, when I first graduated high school, I went to UF um, for engineering and then couldn't get past calculus three. So ended up in healthcare. Um, and I was a respiratory therapist for 10 years and then went back to school um, to become a nurse practitioner. So I'm a nurse mm -hmm. practitioner. I have a, I have a clinical doctorate in nursing. So I am actually Dr. Lisa. Um, and I worked in a traditional practice. I worked in a federally qualified health center. And basically what that means is it's for like patients who don't have insurance or don't have money or are homeless, it's kind of a subsidized program through the government. So I did that for three years and I got to learn about so many different things because these are patients that I can't send to a specialist because nobody pays for a specialist. So I had to figure out how to manage really complex, cool things, wow. which I love. I mean, I love being able to help. So I appreciate my time doing that, but working in like a system like that is long-term, in my opinion, difficult. Like I'm more of an entrepreneur. So in 2015 in Gainesville, um, a, a business partner and I opened a practice and grew it from zero patients in 2015 to 2,700 in 2021. Wow. So it was interesting because we had never owned a practice before. We don't take any insurance. People pay a monthly fee, kind of like a gym membership. Right. So you pay the same amount, whether you come or not, but if you need to come 10 times in one month, you pay no extra, right? So it's kind of a fixed cost for people that are on fixed. They know exactly what the cost is going to be. And um, we figured out like through research that 80% of what happens in healthcare happens in primary care. And if you have a good primary care, you don't overutilize the healthcare system. You don't end up in the ER. You don't end up in the urgent care. If you have a good primary who's taking care of you, they're keeping you happy, healthy, and at home. So that's kind of like the mission of why we did what we did. And we wanted to make it a good experience, right? Everybody's been to the doctor where they're sitting in the waiting room, somebody's coughing on them. Nobody knows their name. They go back to the room, they get their vitals done by somebody who barely speaks to them. And then they have to wait 30 minutes for the doctor to spend three minutes with them. Like, right. that is no way to live. So right. in my practice, we wanted people to have a good experience, right? You come in, everybody knows your name. We have a waiting room where people don't wait. You, When you're back to the room, you see the... the I go in or the clinician goes in with the nurse, you get your vitals, we get go what's going on. We see you for 30 minutes to an hour. It's never rushed. If you have a question after you can text or email. If you have a problem and you're in North Carolina on vacation, you can do a televisit with me or text me and I'll take care of you. You just tell me the closest pharmacy. So it's basically like personalized medicine, like back in the day, like the horse drawn carriage, like it's part of the family and right. you know they know you and you know them. And that really makes a big difference. You know, people tend to um, follow advice more if they know there's some accountability and somebody that actually knows and cares about them. So that's kind of like why we did what we did. And that's why it grew. And it was so interesting. You know, when I we first were, were writing up the business plan or I was writing up the business plan, I was like, this is going to be for middle aged women who never had a good doctor, blah, blah, blah. Well, we happened to get in the front page of the newspaper somehow because it was like healthcare was like one of the things on the docket. So, I mean, I thought we were going to be in the local and state on the third page and we were literally on the front page of the Gainesville Sun newspaper. Wow. It was, it was terrifying. It was awesome. So our practice went like, <laughs> um, but we had, we had business owners call like, do you do business plans? Do you do corporate plans? We didn't do corporate plans. We didn't do, we didn't know what we were doing. We just started. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, we have a corporate plan. Let me get an appointment with you next week. So I figured I'd have a week to write everything up and get everything approved right. by the attorney, all that stuff. So yeah, that's how our corporate plans. And then business owners love it. It's a great way to recruit new employees, retain them. I mean, we'd have people who would like leave a job and then come to us and be like, hey, can you get my boss to sign us up, at my new you know, coworkers at my new job? Because they loved it so much, right? So I don't know. It's great. I mean, I'm new to Flagler County. My practice hasn't even been open September, like three or four months, but it's already growing. Wow. Yeah. 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 It's already growing. Um, I've got a couple of businesses enrolled. I'm always looking to enroll new businesses. It's, um, 
it's fun. I just love taking care of people. You know, I'm just like that kind of human, like any way I can help. And if I can't help, I always feel like bad. I'm like, I can't fix this. Like we have to work on it together to make you better. Um, but I feel like, you know, a clinician, you know, patient relationship is an important thing to help people be healthy. Yeah. I think that makes total sense. I mean, I mean, we, I kind of found out what a primary care doctor was within the past like few years that I've been down here in Flagler because like you said, you go to a just a random kind of doctor. And I remember, this is the funny story. I went up, um, so I'm from originally from Michigan. So I went, I was up in Michigan and I needed to get my vitals done, mostly my blood work. And it was just like this random office that my mom kind of sent me to. And she's like, just go and get it done. And they, like, I don't know these people. And so they take me out. It's been like 20 minutes and they give me a trainee and she can't for the life of her find the vein on my heart. So she poked me in like five different places. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it was like, the, terrible. it was the craziest like situation ever. She like, she couldn't find it. And they had to like go to a completely different spot because she was poking me so Oh, well, that's another thing. That's another thing about going to a primary. You go and then they give you a, like an order for lab work. We do it at the office. Right. We do the lab work there. We have a pharmacy on site. Like it's one stop shop. We do, I do like hormone replacement, IV therapy, B12 injections, um, weight loss injections. Um, I have a machine called a soft wave machine that helps people with chronic pain. So I kind of want to have it where people don't have to go 27 different places to get everything. Yeah. I think that's a huge part is just at least having that, like you said, like having that accountability partner and having someone consistent to take care of you, it eases the mind so much. You're like, all right, well, this something came up. It might be nothing, but at least I can, you know, text Dr. Lisa, call Dr. Lisa, and she knows like, hey, it, it really is nothing or hey, this could be something. Let's just check it out really quick. And like you said, it's a flat rate, so you don't have to worry about all these things. So I think that's really great that you're doing that and that there's more popping up around the area because I think that's really where kind of it should be is these doctors and these nurse practitioners who care a lot about you and want to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with their clients. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So really quick before we wrap up, you're, you, like you said, you're really new to Flagler, um, at least having your business, especially in Palm Coast. Is there any tips or anything that you've learned while kind of reopening down here or up here, I guess, technically geography? Over, oh, over, oh, over, yeah. There. I was like, it's like just you know, moving <laughs> over a little. Um, anything that you learned or any advice that you'd give for kind of new people either in the Flagler area or in just their local community on being more active in their community? Yeah, so you know, we were talking offline earlier about like people coming and being a part of the community, it's hard, you know. Um, I think business owners, if you have a BNI in your community, you should go to that. It's such a good way to connect with other business owners who are like minded. Um, there are so many like nonprofits and charities where you can get involved. Um, I'm involved with Christmas come true. Yes. Um, yeah, Nadine is great. Nadine, yeah. I love Nadine. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I, you, you could, it's whatever is passionate in your heart, find out the nonprofit in your area. There's so many, like, you know, people that love animals, you can be a foster, you know, with Carolyn, like there are so many opportunities to connect with people. And then Flagler County is actually really good. There's a, like, besides BNI, there's, like, Professional Women's Network, there's Bold Ladies. Like, in your community, there's all these opportunities to get to know other people and connect. And don't be afraid to get out there. Whatever you're passionate about, go meet those people. And you have something to, to you know, share with them, and they can share things with you. Yeah, I think nonprofits are an amazing way. Uh, a few people have mentioned that. I'm like, you know, that's such a good idea. I don't know why I never thought of that. Because it's not only like that you're helping, you're giving back to the community, but it's, you know, that sense of you are giving. So the universe will give you what you are giving out, you know? So being yep. open to that, putting that energy out there. And then also you find people who support the same exact causes as you do. And it just builds a kind of a deeper connection. It's not just, hey, we both like this music group. It's like, hey, we both have this deep love and passion for this charity, for this cause. And that really brings people together on a level that's sometimes hard to replicate in other places. Yeah, it's definitely more, not superficial. It's more deep definitely. of a connection, yeah. so... Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Lisa, so much for coming on and sharing a few minutes. I absolutely loved hearing from you, your story, how you help people, and then just the things that you've been doing for the community. So um, before I wrap up, is uh, what is the best way for someone to learn more about you, to contact you if they might have some questions or want to reach out? 
Um, my website is www.trueaccessprimarycare.com. My phone number is 386-227-7027. Um, email is lisa at trueaccessprimarycare.com. And I, I'm on social media, you know, Facebook and Instagram. I used to make fun of my kids. I had their teenagers. I'd be like, what is that Insta snap, Snapgram thing? Anyway, I'm on Instagram and Facebook because my 20 year old helps take care of that stuff for me. Oh, but um, nice. yeah, she's great at it. So um, yeah, I'm happy to answer questions or, you know, I'm actually going to be speaking in May at the Bold Ladies um, monthly event talking about like stress reduction and how to live your best life and be healthy. And I love stuff like that. So, you know, anybody out there that, you know, wants to, know more about how I can help with those kind of things I'm also happy to do that perfect well I'll make sure I have all that information in the description so people can click on it find it a little bit easier um and thank you so much again Dr. Lisa for coming on and sharing a few minutes I really appreciate it uh it was great you have a good day thank you thank you bye, bye.